All these things that were done were essentially to create a certain enhanced sense of life energy so that the people who live in this house will naturally move towards well being. There is a way of consecrating your home, entire home, every part of it, so that there is some sense of aliveness and energy. Today you have built homes which are so large, it's very difficult to make them alive just by living. If you just had a one-room house and you lived in great sense of love and joy, you can easily keep it very alive. But today your house has ten, fifteen enclosures, it's very difficult for any human being to keep it alive. Once in a way, if you do not enliven in it, Slowly, if you enter certain parts of your home, you will see it feels like a coffin. I want all of you today, uh, you know your house well enough, where you need to open your eyes, you open, but just walk with your eyes closed, with your left hand outstretched a little bit and just walk, just feel and walk around the house. You will see many parts of your house will feel like a coffin. Some parts may be alive, usually I find kitchens are alive. Because it's the only place something is happening, everywhere else. If you live in a very, very alive way, you can end live in something. But when you have twelve, fifteen, twenty enclosures in your house, it's very, very difficult for anybody to end live in all that. This is all that's happened. The thing is, uh, what this Punya Puja is, uh, the Puja is about getting you into an energetic space where you become alive to these things. So the Punya Puja is to end live in the house. The space in the house should become alive. So Punya Puja once in a way, at least once a year would light it up. That is, you have the space around you alive and it supports you. People are not moving about joyfully, either they are uh, staring at their computer screen, or they're depressed, or they're sleeping, inertia of various levels and various levels of stresses and tensions, it slowly builds up in the space and it can overwhelm a person. Any number of people will find, if they're feeling sick, particularly if they're feeling psychologically, you know, kind of oppressed, you will see if they just walk out of that space, they will feel great. If they move to another place, they will almost become healthy, many times, many, many times for most people. Not everybody who is having psychological problems are pathologically ill. Most of them are victims of the situations in which they exist, various type of situations. Energy situation is one of them and an important one. So Punya Puja is a way of consecrating your home, entire home, every part of it, so that there is some sense of aliveness and energy and it's good to make use of the support of Punya Puja. It's a wonderful process through which it will be done. People who are actively involved in businesses, careers, family, life, one of the main things which does not allow a human being to find helpful, useful potential is friction. Friction need not necessarily mean that you're getting into a fight with somebody, but when you try to be active in a big way, it builds up around you. Bhairaviyantra is for those who are actively involved with life, they want to duplicate. So Devi and all the forms, different types of yantras available with regard to Devi is about that, to bring grace in such a way that you can take up things and do things and you still do not get into friction. Her grace will take care of that. We estimated if the homes are 
anywhere between 2,000 to 2,500 square feet of home, we thought the small yantra would do. When we noticed that the homes are larger than that, we said, this is not enough and we brought the Avigna. And Avigna has a slightly more business-like attitude towards it. More for success and prosperity. But of course, those who want to make use of it for spiritual processes can always make use of it. That element is always the basic element. The idea is uh, to create an energy form, to create assistance for people to do whatever they want to do. Because different spaces, indoors especially, in different spaces, there are different kinds of… one thing is smells, there's also different kinds of energy structures which will happen. The shape and size of the room will do this. This is why there is such a attention to the shape and size of the room. In Indian culture, there is a whole attention to the shape and size of the room in which you live. Because the shape and size of the room in some way, if it is not heavily ventilated, when I say heavily ventilated, from both sides, two walls are open and it's happening, then it feels almost like outdoor, that's different. Most homes are not made this way because uh, they have neighbors, you can't open too many windows, <laughs> too many openings won't work, there is weather, there are many things, all right. And there is air conditioning, worse. So, different shapes and sizes kind of create different kinds of energy structures. These energy structures can, if they become very strong, can determ determine your psychological and emotional state, which either can be conducive or can become an impediment in who you want to be. So, certain substances in India, there is something called as samrani, which is a very powerful thing which is used even when people are ill. First thing they do is this, and it is now been found, it also kills certain types of bacteria in the air and also on the surfaces. So especially if there is a sick person in the house, samrani everywhere. If they want to do some auspicious event, samrani all over the place. It's a certain kind of regime which uh, a tree drips. Uh, this has a powerful impact on the atmosphere. It is not necessarily a fragrance, it is a different kind of thing that it clarifies the air, it just makes the atmosphere feel more lively. Fundamentally, it… whatever structures that they are there, it will make indoor like outdoor. If you burn a mild… you shouldn't to put too much, just mild samrani in the house will make it feel like, though you're indoors, the feeling is of out outdoors because it's an un unstructured space. One can use it in a sensible manner, but these days incense is being made with chemical stuff, best you don't burn those things. This sense of no human being should live in an unconsecrated space is something which is deep-rooted in this culture. It's not just about what you eat, it's not just about what kind of work you do, what kind of space you live in. This is very important in the East. Griha Pravesham is you built a new house and you want to… your family wants to move in. So, you want the house to be in the right kind of condition for you to move in. The design of the house, the aesthetics of the house, what kind of paint, what kind of this, all this is different, that is also important. 
But what kind of energy fills this space is very, very important. So before you live there, nobody ever sleeps in a house which is uninitiated. So it is a minor form of consecrating the space. Before moving into the house, the house must be… the space must be consecrated, otherwise people won't go and live there. So, people always consecrated their homes in whichever way they know best and only then moved in. Because if you want to produce generations of enhanced human beings, you need this kind of space. Otherwise, only by accident or by personal dint, somebody may become something. You won't produce a generation of beautiful people. This fortune almost every family had because before they moved into homes, they did this. Periodically they did something to enhance the house. This is part of almost every house. Every household at least once a year conducted the needed rituals and processes to see that the space in the house is enhanced. A basic understanding or rather an essential understanding of how to generate a conducive atmosphere for a human being to grow to his full potential. So Gruha Pravesham was just this that you want to create the right kind of soil for this plant to grow and flower and fruit.